Hello and welcome. If this is your first time here, my name is Shadeva Roberts. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with what's happening here on this channel. And if you already subscribed, thank you so much for tuning in today. This week's word, I want to talk to you about being like a tree. And you might be saying, be like a tree for what? <laughs> but there is a very familiar passage of, uh, of scripture that, you know, in the, the Christian community, we can tend to, you know, quote a lot. But I think the struggle sometimes is us actually getting the benefit of what that scripture says. And what do we have to do? We have to get the context of it. We got to get the words that, you know, what was the Lord saying when he gave these words? What When he was speaking, you know, through these individuals, what was he saying? We have to get the context of it. So, you know, um, many of the promises of God come with conditions. So what does that mean? You know, uh, if you do things, you know, this way or that, then you'll get the intended results. Just like an instruction manual, you know, you get the instruction manual, you take a look at it, and you just decide, okay, I don't need the tools, I don't need the screws, I don't need none of this, I'm just do what I want to do. Then you're going to get your results. But in order for you to get the intended um, results of the manufacturer, you have to follow step by step what that instruction manual says. So for the word, the word that I'm referring to, it is Psalm chapter 1, verse 3, and it's in, in the New King James Version. And it says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. I'm going to read it to you another way. This is Psalms 1, 3 in the New, in the new International Version. So we read it in the New King James, King James Version. Now we're going to read it in the New International Version. And it says, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither whatever they do prosperous. And so, as I said, you know, all the time we talk about being like a tree planted by the rivers of living water, you know, and we're going to produce, you know, and be prosperous and prosper in everything we do in every season. But there are some conditions to this word, and I want us to get into it today. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I bless you. We bless you, Lord, and we just praise your name and thank you for your goodness, Father. We welcome you into this space, into this place, Lord God, to just have your way. I decrease, Father God, that you might increase. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us, set us free, deliver us, Lord God, and help us to get your intended results, Father God, in our lives, Lord, through us following your instructions and following your word. Minister to our hearts and to our minds, to Heavenly Father. I thank you. I bless you. And I give you praise. And I trust you to do just that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So I read the scripture for you. And as I said, we've heard it many times before, time and time again, you know. But what I want to do today for us is unlock how we can get uh, these benefits, how we can be like that tree, planted and prospering in all that we do. But in order for me to do that, I gotta take you to the beginning of that chapter. I gotta take you to uh, where these words came from, you know, cause they kind of just fall somewhere off in this particular passage of scripture. But what comes before that? What's our condition? What do we need to know to be able to get these benefits? All right, so verse one, uh, Psalms, verse one, uh, chapter one, verse one, New International Version says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. So this is where it begins. And I know you're probably like, whoa, whoa, okay. Wow, that's a condition. Yes, indeed. So what does that mean? So we see that off top, the Lord is dealing with our company. You wouldn't think the company and being trained like planted like a tree, you know, by the rivers of water and also uh, producing fruit and being still and prospering. And all you do have anything to do with your company. Let's keep going. You know, I could really just kind of stop right there with it all. But off top, he's dealing with our company, you know. So if we spend, you know, most of our times doing things that we shouldn't do with people who we know we shouldn't be doing it with going in places that they go and doing what they do, how can we expect to get the results that God wants us to get from his word? 
So he is automatically dealing with those who we surround ourselves. You know, before we can be still, before we can be planted, we've got to watch who we roll with. This is the word, the word of God. This is one of the conditions for us being able to be planted like that tree. And so for us, that's the starting point. That's the starting point. Verse one, starting point. And then we get on into some other things. But this is where we start. Scripture says, do not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. You know, if if our, our our daily lives we're walking side by side with the we can go on where they go, doing the things that they do, then that can keep us from being planted. Planted where in the things of God. God wants us to take His way, do things His way, and that way we can get the benefits. We can get the benefits of whatever the word says. So we see, you know, by our company that we won't be able to produce much fruit. You know, especially if we're standing in the way that sinners take. You always produce more of that uh, of which you're planning in until you change the soil. You know, bad company corrupts good character. You don't believe me? Let me read it for you in the word. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, New International Version says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Okay. And then it's, it goes on to say, if we sit in the company of mockers, you know, um, whether it's um, mocking other people or, Lord forbid, mocking God, you know, that it'll keep us from being able to produce the fruit, to be to keep us from being able to stand and keep us um, from being able to prosper. So our company matters to God. If you don't hear anything in this first uh, uh, verse of scripture in Psalm, Psalm chapter one, verse one, then please hear that God is concerned about all of us, the full facet of our lives. And he's concerned about our company. He's saying that if you're going in the way of sinners, if you're standing or going in the way of sinners, if you're standing around with mockers, if you're going in the way of the wicked, then you end up getting the reward of the wicked. We don't want the reward of the wicked. We want to do what God is calling us to do. We want to surround ourselves with those who are pointing towards the future that we are, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, striving to go towards you know you ever heard people say you know that um the people that you're around right now determine where you're going to be in the next five years that's sobering <laughs> so you got to think about your company you got to think you know take a look around you and see okay is this where i want to be in the next five years is this really what i want you know is this what god wants for me and this is some license you know to go throw everybody away but i think you get the understanding of what i'm saying that we can't do wicked things we can't be you know constantly sowing seeds of wickedness and doing things you know in a simple way and this is talking about people who've turned their hearts over they just ain't no god in them they ain't trying to do what god wants to do they ain't going his way or any of those things um if we're constantly sowing those types of seed, how will we produce the fruit that God wants us to produce? You see, so we have to really, um, we got to take account for that. We got to pay attention to that, not to just be throwing people away. Because, you know, um, I think one of the confusing things about scripture sometimes for people is they feel like when you hear a scripture like this, this means that, you know, we're supposed to be holier than thou. We're supposed to separate ourselves from, you know, from the sinner. No, those are the people we're supposed to be ministering to. Those who have, you know, of us who have, you know, given our lives to the Lord and said, hey, God, I choose to live my life for you. You know, we've submitted ourselves to him. Now, we have a call to be disciples in the earth, um, you know what I'm saying, to disciple other people, to bring them to Christ, to tell them the good news, those sorts of things. So you're never going to get away from the wicked or sinful people. But where's the where's the separation? You know what I'm saying? You're going to be around them. You have to have a conversation with them in order to be able to tell them about Christ. You know, so God is not saying you got to go, you know, crawl up under some rock or become a monk or something like that and just disassociate yourself with anyone who's not a Christian. That's not what the scripture is saying. But your company, the company that you keep every single day, the places that you go every single day, the things that you do, are they glorifying God? Is the company around you helping you to glorify God? Is it taking you into the destiny and the future that God has for you? If not, you need to do an assessment. If you want to be like that tree, if you want to produce the, the fruit that God wants you to produce in life, if you want to prosper in all of your ways, you know, that's a hopeful statement for me. God is saying this is what we have to take a look at. All right. We're also going to look at another scripture. Um, and it says, this is Galatians 6, chapter 7, New King James Version. It says, do not be deceived. 
God is not mocked. Okay, we talked about standing in the way or, or um, uh, walking alongside mockers. Okay, God is not mocked for whatsoever a man sows that he will also reap. So I just talked about the different things that we do. If we sow what the wicked, wicked sow, then we're going to reap what they reap. Absolutely not. That's not my plan. That's not my goal. And I hope and pray that it's not yours. So we don't want to sow what they sow. Um, you know, we have to uh, strive after getting the reward that God has for us because we want to be like a tree, as I said in the beginning. We want to be like a tree. We want to be able to stand firm. You know, when things are tossed to and fro in this world, we don't want to be tossed to and fro with them. We want to be firm in the Lord, firm in all that he's called us to and all that he's doing in our lives. Okay, so now we're going to go back up to a uh, psalm, but we're going from Psalm 1 verse 1, New International Version, version to Psalm 1 verse 2 but i'm gonna read back through it It says blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the lord and who meditates on his law day and night here's our other condition this is the next thing we got to do to be planted like that tree to produce much fruit Hallelujah. And to prosper in all that we do. What is the law? The law that's being referred to here is the word of God. We got to take delight in the word. We got to take great pleasure in the word. Spend time in the word, basking in the word, uh, just turning it over and over and over in our hearts constantly. We can't stop. We got to get it into us. And after we take all of it in, what does it say? Now we have to meditate on it day and night constantly taking the word in, hearing the word by way of sermon, by way of reading the word, by praying the scriptures back to, you know, the Lord, by speaking scriptures over ourselves, by talking, you know, speaking the word out loud as, you know, affirmations over our lives to motivate ourselves. We got to get into the word. We have to be rooted and grounded in it. Our roots have to go down into it. It has to be so much a part of us that we can't be separated from it because that's what gives us the victory. And it's not just reading words on the page. You understand what I'm saying? We have to take the time to study, to get behind the words on the page. We study to show ourselves approved. We study the word going deeper in the scripture, getting, you know, uh, concordances and, and all these different things. We want to understand what we're reading, not just taking the words that we see on the page. We want to get an understanding of what they mean. We want to catch context as we're doing today. What is the context of a particular scripture? How does this apply to my life? All of those things are things that we do to make sure that we're getting the word of God into us and we're becoming rooted and grounded in the word. The word of God is rich. It is rich and it is full of promises for us, you know, but if we don't know it, how can we reap the benefits of it? I'm going to say that again. If we don't know the word of God, how can we reap the benefits from the word of God? We've got to know, you know what I'm saying? And I just consider that, you know, like, um, what if you got behind the wheel of a car for the first time? You don't know what to do. Nobody ever showed you how to drive. You've never seen anyone drive. You didn't read the instruction manual. You don't know how to get the car started. Okay, but you get in and just try to wing it. <laughs> so you get it started. You get it going. What's going to happen? An accident, a fatal accident is going to happen for you or for somebody else. And that's how our lives are. When we don't have the word. We don't have the word of God in us. Many accidents and mistakes happen because we don't have truth. We don't have knowledge. We don't have an understanding of what we should be doing. And so, yes, accidents happen. So we've got to get in the word. Okay. Now we see how to be planted like the tree by the streams of water and that that tree yields fruit in its season. Its leaves will not wither and whatever they do prospers that's the goal for us to prosper in all that we do in prospering sometimes 
may not look like what prospering looks like in our mind. You know, God may cause you to prosper in your thinking in an area where you have struggled for a long time. He may cause you to prosper in your health where you've been sick for a period of time or for a long period of time. He may cause you to prosper, you know, um, on your job or, or whatever the case is. He may ca cause you to prosper, you know, in a business or, or, or arena or something of that nature. It's not always that it's a financial blessing. We think of prospering. But the scripture does say that if we apply these different things, that we'll prosper in all that we do. So in all of your ways, God, want, God, God wants to prosper you. He wants to prosper us. But we've got to follow his strategies. We've got to follow the things that he said. So in the right time, in the right season, we'll produce the fruit. God's fruit, it'll happen on time, just as just as he intended for it to happen. It won't be, you know, ahead of time. It won't be so much fruit we can't bear it and, you know, we can't handle it and all those sorts of things. No, it's going to be on time. It's going to be just the way he wants it to happen. But we've got to trust in him. And, and also it says, you know, that your leaves won't wither. You know, you think about a, a, a live plant in your home. If you don't water that plant, just like we don't water ourselves with the word, what ends up happening to that plant? You walk by one day, it's green, it's beautiful, you know, it's starting to grow and flourish and those sorts of things. And then a week or so later, you ain't, you ain't putting no water in it. Let another week or so go by, you ain't putting no water in it. What's going to happen? That plant starts to die. The leaves begin to wither. They begin to wither and then they fall off. <laughs> so we don't want to fall off. You know, we want to stay with the Lord. We want our leaves um, not to be withered. You know, your leaves won't wither because you'll be washed, washed with the water of his word. That's Ephesians 5, 26 through 27, New International Version. You'll be washed with the water of his word and you'll be without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, holy and blameless. As the word of God says, you'll be able to stand like that tree planted and producing much glory in the earth for the glory of God. And that's what we're after ultimately, the glory of God. May the glory of God be revealed in our lives. May the glory of God be revealed in our circumstances. May the glory of God be revealed by the company we keep. May the glory of God be revealed on our jobs and you know all the work that we do with our hands and in our ministries. May the glory of God be revealed. Build. And we have to trust him, as I said, and take him at his word. And guess what? Whatever we do then will prosper. I declare to you today, follow his commands, follow his leading, and whatever you do will prosper. God wants to promise us as we follow his ways, not being in the way of the sinner or following the ways of the wicked, but going in his way in truth. And that's where we're going to get the best results. And so um, I want to go down to another passage of scripture for you. All right, so we're going to go into Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 9 in the New International Version. And it says, then the Lord your God will make you most prosperous in all the work of your hands and in the fruit of your womb the young of your livestock and the crops of your land. Then the Lord your God will make you most prosperous in all the work of your hands and in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your land. Hallelujah. The Lord will again delight in you and make you prosperous just as he delighted in your ancestors. And so this is how we know that God is faithful. He's been speaking these same words for generations. Who is he talking to in this particular passage of scripture? He's talking to the children of Israel before they entered into the promised land. But right before all of this, there are some conditions. There are some conditions, just as I read. He spoke to them and he prepared them. You're getting ready to go over here. Okay, this is what's going to happen. If you do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you can trust me to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But I'm just letting you know, if you go over there and you do five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> if you if you do all these other things, it's not going to work out in your favor. You have to follow my commands. You got to follow my leading. You have to go with me so that you can get the results. And just as he said in the word. The Lord will again delight in you and make you prosperous just as he delighted in your ancestors. So he's speaking to the children of Israelites in this scripture, the children of Israelites, the children of Israel in this particular scripture. He also is speaking to us, 
the, the, the children of Abraham, those who believe, who have faith and trusted in God, trusted in what he said, follow his decrees and his command. Abraham had faith and trusted in God and believed him without having, you know, um, seeing that Jesus Christ walked this earth. But God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He trusted him. And we have to trust him. We have to take him at his word so we can get these benefits. So there's always going to be something that's conditional, not to say that God doesn't want to bless us or doesn't want to do great things in our lives. But he's saying this is the how to going back to the instruction manual. You don't just pick up anything for the first time and do it and, and just wing it. You got to know how. What's the directions for how to do this thing? And this is what God is saying. If you follow these instructions and follow this instruction manual, you're going to get things results. So uh, he's giving um, conditions for us all. We've all got to take him at his word and not compromise. We got to trust him and not compromise. We can be just like that tree. We can be just like that tree if we follow the Lord, if we continue to put one foot uh, forward each and every single day. I believe that as we even you know, do these things in our own lives. As we're taking the time to make sure um, that we're following the Lord, I believe that rubs off on other people. I believe people see us and they see us prospering. I believe they see us and they see uh, us doing the things that God has called us to do and it's intriguing for them. I believe that they see us and they say, I wanna get those same results. And I believe by those things happening, that's when we open up a door to be able to be a blessing to others, to be able to share the good news, to be able to tell them how the Lord is blessing us or how we were able to even get to the place that we're in. So that's why it's important for us to make sure we're following what we need to be doing. Then God's light can be uh, just shine so brightly. He can be glorified in the earth and others will be drawn to that as God is blessing us to be still to be planted in all these you know, crazy things that can happen in this world as we're being still, as they see us prospering in all that we do, producing fruit in seasons where it looks like we shouldn't be or it looks like nobody should be. But as we are following God, he said he'll cause us to produce fruit in the right season. So the season of the world may not look like the season that God has, but if we trust him, that fruit will be produced our leaves will not wither and we will be planted so i'm going to go on down um to close all of this out i'm going back into psalm <laughs> going back up into it i know we've been to multiple scriptures but i'm going back to psalm chapter one and this is verses three through six okay this is the alternative this is psalm one three through six new international version this is the alternative to us not doing things God's way in essence okay and it says that person that person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither whatever they do prosperous that's what the, the scripture that we you know begin all of this with but the alternative as we go on down three through six says not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. He promised us he'd do that. But the way of the wicked leads to destruction. So where it talks about the wicked, they will not stand in judgment they won't be able to stand they won't be able to stand nor sinners will be able to stand in, in um, the assembly of the righteous they won't be there will be a judgment day you know we'll have to give an account for the things that we do down here on the earth but God loves us and I believe those things are going to be for rewards in heaven not whether we get getting in or not but for rewards but we know as we see in the scripture here what happens to the wicked they are like chaff that the wind blows away we don't want to blow away we want to stand firm we want to prosper in all that we do we want to see the benefit of all that God has promised us he watches over our way 
as he said, he watches over the way of the righteous. So he's going to keep us. He'll order our footsteps. He'll clear our pathway for us. He'll make our path straight. He'll bless us on our way because he watches over our way. There's fullness of blessings for those of us who follow the Lord's way. I want to receive the fullness of God's blessings. And my prayer for you is that you would desire to see the fullness of God's blessings as well. I don't want to reap the benefits of the wicked. Not now, not, <laughs> not ever. I want to strive to be blessed. I want to strive to do those things, you know, that that God has um, has has promised me. I want to strive to do those things that he's called me to do, but also receive those things that he's promised me. I want to go in his way. I don't want to reap what the wicked reap. So we can be stable, we can be faithful and blessed as we follow God's way. That's what that tree is like. It's stable. It's faithful. Faithful trusting in God. Faithful over time. Faithful in seasons. In and out. You know, wheat leaves not withering. Faithful and stable. And also blessed. Prospering in all of its ways because of trusting in the Lord and His ways. I pray that you know, just hearing this word broken down today stimulates something on the inside of you. And that the next time you hear these words, want to be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water that produces, you know, fruit in this season and, you know, prospers and all they do. That you remember all these things I just shared with you today. They are definitely conditions and I want us to see the benefit of it. I want us to walk in it. I want us to be planted. I want us to be, you know, able to glorify God and, and that others will glorify God because they see how he's blessing us. And that's my prayer for you. That's my exhortation, my encouragement with this word today. But I want us to pray to seal it all because I trust God to meet us. I trust God to turn this word over in us, make it come alive in us so that daily we're thinking of, Lord, what do I need to do? Is there something I need to fix? Is there something I need to be uh, leaning into you more with so that I can get these benefits because I, these benefits because I want to be like that tree. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, dear gracious and Heavenly Father, we bless you and give you praise today. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that if we take you at your word, then we can receive and reap those benefits, Lord God, of everything that you have for us. I believe that you want us to be like a light on a hill, Father God. I believe that, Lord God, that you want to bless us all. I believe that you want to make a distinction with your children, Father God. I believe that. And I just pray, Lord God, for every person who hears my voice right now, who's praying along with me, that you would have that hope and that expectation as well. And you would trust in the living God. Trust in his promises. Follow his leading, his instruction manual. Get it down into your soul. Get into your spirit. Read it. Take the word in daily. Meditate on it day and night, as the scripture says. Delighting in the law. Hallelujah of God. The law of the Lord. Delighting in it. Taking delight in it. Getting an understanding of it so we can reap the benefits. We want to know what your word says so that we can receive every benefit of everything that you have for us in the earth. While we have time here, Lord. So, Father, I just pray your blessings over myself and over every person listening, Lord God. Hallelujah, that you bless us, Lord, as we follow hard after you. We thank you, Lord. We honor you. We glorify you and praise your righteous and holy name. You're worthy, Lord, and you're faithful. And we bless you for it. We ask all of it in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be blessed. Be blessed. I pray this word was a blessing to you. And I will catch you all in the next video. Bye.